Hello everyone. How is everyone doing? Today is Monday, May the 6th. How did everyone enjoy their Cinco de Mayo yesterday? Um, my husband and I spent time with friends. Hold on, let me adjust this camera in my table. Okay, now I think I got it. Hold on, I might need to change glasses because I can't see. Okay, that's better. Hi Fanny, how are you? Let me twist this back around this way. There we go. I'm about to get it right. I don't know why. I get on camera and everything goes haywire. Hi Meaches, how are you? I um uh, just wanted to uh, come on tonight. I did not have a schedule program as you probably noticed, but there's always a ram in the bush. So tonight I am going to talk to you. Hi Adele. And I'm going to talk with you about promotion. But before I do that, I have a couple of promotions that I need to do myself. Hi Toya. Okay. Facebook has changed this, uh, <laughs> the Facebook Live, the way they tag people, they have changed it again. So I'm trying to adjust to the new changes. Okay, so first of all, Nanny Palooza, you know how important it is to me personally. Um, Nanny Palooza early registration is going on right now. Uh, Nanny Palooza has been putting out um, blasts on, on social media about the, the speakers that they have lined up so far. So visit Nanny Palooza page here on Facebook. Go to nannypalooza.com. Sign up for the conference. It's going to be in Columbia, Maryland. It's going to be the weekend of the 12th through the... Is it the 10th through the 12th? Anyway, the second weekend in uh, October. I think it's the 12th or the 14th. I'm not sure. I have to check my calendar. But go to Nanny Palooza. Get signed up. Be there. I'll be there waiting for you. Okay, you still have time to save up your money and save up, you know, if you get the early registration, it's only $175. Best deal ever. Okay, also... Nashville. Are you listening, Nashville? INNTD, the International Nanny Training Day, is coming to Nashville in 2020. I had about five ladies ask me about INNTD, and they were disappointed because there wasn't one in Nashville. Well, they heard you. And now we have organizers that Thank you, Meaches, the 11th through the 13th. I knew it was somewhere around that weekend. Thank you, Meaches. And for some reason, okay, there I am. My camera just, but INNTD is coming to Nashville. So those of you who didn't uh, get a chance to go to INNTD in Nashville this year, Next year, it's going to be in your city. I'm excited because I, I hate it. I hate telling people that, no, it's not going to work. So, it'll be there. You need to attend. Go online in January or February when all the, um, when all the organizers put their, uh, Put it when all the organizers put it online and announce where it's going to be, what the venue is, and the speakers and everything. And you will see Nashville will be in the lineup this year. Okay, so now that I've got those two out of the way, my next announcement is, and it has to do with the promotion, which is what we're talking about tonight. Ask the Nanny is on the road next month. In the month of June, I will be in Atlanta. 
we are going to have a Sunday social and a Monday night live. And when I say a Sunday social, we are going to congregate and meet together and toss ideas around, a meeting of the minds, get to know each other. We are inviting uh, the nannies and I will be advertising that soon. As soon as the final uh, everything gets finalized, I will be advertising that soon. So nannies, if you are in or around Atlanta, please join me uh, in June. It will be the third weekend of June, uh, June the 21st, 22nd, 23rd. I'll be there. And not to be outdone, DC, I'm coming in July for a Sunday social with Adcan on July the 21st. So I am so excited and I want you all to get excited about yourselves. Next week, which is why I'm doing tonight in preparation for next week. Next week, we are going to have a nanny entrepreneur online fair. If you have anything that you have a side business, you're selling makeup, you're doing uh, jams, you're doing baking cakes, you're making clothes, you're doing embroidery, whatever you do, contact me so we can get your name out there, get your business out there, promote you on next week's Ask the Nanny. So if you have something that you do, a side business, contact me. Send me a PM, email me, contact me on my page. Get in contact with me so your name can be on the list. You know we only have a limited amount of time. So all of you who are watching now, please hit the share button. Hi, Missy. How are you? Hi, Deidre. I saw you come in too. Hi, Alta. And hi, Nanny Sheila and Carrie. Let's see, who else came in? Uh... Hi, Juliana. Hi, Ravy. I think I got everybody. Now, if you hit the share button so that your friends and nanny sisters won't miss this. Tonight, I'm talking about promotion. I have a guest that's coming on later once I finish, and she's going to talk about uh, something that she did to promote herself that elevated her to the next level. And that's what I want for all of you all to elevate you and get you to the next level. Now, promotion is not about being promoted, uh, I should say, at your job. When I, this, when I talk about promotion, I mean promoting yourself. As in, I'm a walking billboard today. Everywhere I go, everybody says, what's that? You get to promote yourself. You get to talk about yourself. You get to tell them what you do, how you are. When I'm at work, when I go for an interview or I have a business meeting, I wear my polo shirt and I have my logo. I don't know if you can see that. My logo is embroidered on my polo shirt. When I have a business meeting, I wear a polo shirt and some khakis and some nice shoes So to promote myself. This is my business. And while I'm out, I usually go to a store or two. And people say, what is that? Do you own your own business? Can you, you know, are you hiring? Promoting yourself. When I go to work, and I work with other families, and when I work with the babies, I put this on my scrubs. It's on my scrub. It's embroidered. There's a local uh, store here, embroidery shop. It's a t-shirt shop that I use. And I get them done for ten dollars, uh, ten dollars per shirt. I buy my own shirts. I take them in, and I get them embroidered. But everywhere I go, it's promoting myself. That's what I want you to do. It's not hard to do. Some of these things that I'm going to tell you, they cost money, but investing in yourself and investing in uh, the things that you believe in. That's what it's going to get you to the next level. Now, the first thing I want you to do is create a dream board. 
I have a dream board. I don't know if you all know about the science project boards. I'm sure you have helped your nanny kids or probably have had to do it yourself. The, nanny, the I have a science board, one of those threefold science boards. And in the middle, I have Ask the Nanny. And when I have Ask the Nanny, I have arrows pointing out. And everything that I want to do, and my biggest, most impossible dreams, I have that on there. And I have arrows for reaching out from those arrows. There are things that you have to do to get to where you want to go. The journey getting there is not going to be easy. And it takes hard work and it takes strategy. That's why you have to have a list. That's why you have to have a board so you can see where you want to go. And continue to see where you want to go because if you lose sight of where you want to go, you get lost along the way. We don't want you to get lost. So, I want you to promote your ideas. The easiest things, one of the easiest things to do, and you can do this for like five, maybe ten dollars on Vista Print. Doesn't have to be fancy. As a business card, this is my calling card. I use both sides of this card to promote myself because I may see you for two seconds in passing. Hey, how you doing? Here's my business card. There's a list of everything that I do. On the back, there's a list of everything, my contact information. So if you want to contact me, it is all here. Everything that I do is here. This is your calling card. This is your resume on a card. I think Vista Print starts out, and you can find these online, it's vistaprint.com, and shipping is like $5.99. So for like $12, you can get 100 cards. Now you say, well, I don't know 100 people to get my cards to. Keep listening. I got 100 people that you can give your cards to. So, get your cards. Put your information on there. And the more information you have on here, the better. But list it about yourself, your contact information, email, website, whatever the case may be, phone numbers. And just a side note, please do not use your email that says sassypants at gmail.com. That's not going to work. Because nobody's going to want believe that you work with children and you sassy pants. Get a business email. Mine is threeparents at gmail.com because I'm the third parent academy. I also have one that correlates to my, my website, which is the thethirdparent.com. I have an email that goes directly to from my website to my email. So don't do the sassy pants. Don't do the, the super chick or the the uh, babes on wheels or whatever that, that whatever that sassy cute little uh, email address that you have. Don't do that on here. If you want people to take you seriously and you want to elevate to the next level and promote yourself, don't put that on your card. Don't put that on any of your business uh, paraphernalia. That's not okay. That's not professional. You want to be taken as a professional? Be a professional. Now, my next point is uh, vendors at job fairs. There are job fairs. There are uh, different community organizations that come. Uh, I know one is coming up in August that I'm going to be attending and I have applied to become a vendor. It's going to cost me $60 to put myself out there. But these business cards, it's going to be parents there. They're going to be families there. They're going to be other nannies there. They're going to be other businesses there, other agencies there. This business card is going to go to those people because I may not be t able to talk to all of you as long as I want to, but here's my business card. Get in contact with me. And that way, you have a, they have a way of contacting me. They have a way of, uh, I didn't get to finish my conversation when we were at the table, when we, at your vendor table, but they will contact you. Be ready. 
And when you answer the phone, don't say, hello, girl, why you? Answer professionally. Good afternoon. Good morning. This is Angela. How may I help you? When you put yourself out there and your business phone out there or your phone number out there, sound professional. That's all I'm saying. Be professional. If you want people to take you seriously, be professional. If you want to promote yourself and get to the next level, be professional. My next point is get your web page. Again, you can go to Vistaprint, Yahoo, uh, Google, GoDaddy, all of them. Get your web page. Uh, just a simple page holder. You don't have to have a full site. A simple page holder. A page about who you are, what your services are, and how to contact you. One page. But you are out there. And you are being seen. And you have somewhere to send your people from your electronic portfolio. When you send your clients, your electronic portfolio, your website goes with them. Get an electronic portfolio and have, just in case the web goes down or you don't have an opportunity to send them, take a, a, a binder portfolio, a one that's handheld. Take it with you. Pictures are worth a thousand words. Certificates, they can see all of that. As you're talking with them, they're flipping through your, your portfolio and looking at all the things that you're doing. It's professional. It's promoting you. And once you get through with that job and that interview with that client, give them a mini portfolio. And when I say a mini portfolio, the mini portfolio has your resume. It may have whatever it is that you are. If, say you're in the, uh, as a nanny, I'll use a nanny. You're a nanny. You have your, your resume. Modify your resume to look up to date. Put a picture of you on there. If you have children that you were taking care of and you have permission to use the picture of you and those children, it goes a long way. That's how people are going to remember you. Put your resume in there, a copy, a sample copy of a contract. Even if you don't use that particular contract or you go through and you change 50 million things in that contract, make sure it's in there so the parents that you go to know that you operate as a professional and that you are going to go buy a contract so that you and that parent will know this is agreement that we have between us. Not hearsay, well, I don't think I said that. I don't think I told you that. If it's in writing, they signed it, you signed it, this is what we go by. Most people don't like the word contract, work agreement, whatever you want to call it, have it in there. I normally take uh, a milestones from zero to 12 months. You can find it online, print it out. It's general milestones of things that children, should, at what age and stage, they should be doing things. Have it in there. I have a, a list of 28 reviews on care.com. I print them out. I put them in there so that it creates a history. If I have old employers that I have letters from 10, 12 years ago, I take a few of those and I put them in there to create a, a history of, I have been doing this for a long time, so I have experience. And it shows your people that you have experience in what you're doing. It gives you longevity. So if you have longevity and you are putting all that into that packet, it makes you memorable. A lot of nannies are gonna come and have a portfolio. A lot of them are gonna be good, just like you are. But what's gonna make you stand out? that portfolio, that mini portfolio that you leave with them. Be sure you do that. Now, the next thing is you're going to have to give, be willing to give away something in order to get something free. I know you don't like to hear that, but free comes to mind. I have a jam business. In order to promote my jam business, I give away a lot of jam. But I get a lot of business in return because once you taste it, 
and they're like, oh, this is good. I want to give something to my boss. I want to give something to here. I want to give some. I give some for Mother's Day. I've made three or four different baskets for Mother's Day. Only because I gave away a sample. And they came back and said, I want to buy some. I want to buy this. And they're willing to buy it. But you've got to be willing to give away something. If you bake cakes, make some cupcakes. Make some mini cupcakes so you have, you know, you can make 48 at one time. And, you know, pass them out. You know how they do when you're in the mall and they're passing out these little chickens on, this, on a little toothpick? Your cupcakes. That's your signature. Make your best cupcake and pass it out. Be willing to, to let people sample what you have. Just saying. That sample can bring you more business. So free can get you money in your pocket. Now, social media blasts. Be very professional on your social media blasts. Have friends to share your content. Write a blog every once in a while and post it in your groups. Post it on your page. Have your friends to share your page. Have your friends to share your content. The more you get out there and be consistent when you do it, the more you get out there, the more you are seen, the more you, you do on social media. And I'm not talking about foolishness. I'm talking about business wise and personal wise. Bubbles with a tag with your info. Good point, Deidre. The more you put out on social media and be willing to offer advice in the nanny groups and be the one that offers good advice be the one who is not controversial uh, when you offer advice if it's a if you're correcting someone or adding some information word it to the point where you're not sounding like uh-uh that's not right this is what i know and i took the class and i did no you don't want to come across sounding controversial just say, well, when I took a class, this is what I was taught. And that way you come across saying, you know, being the student, even though you know this for a, a fact, being the student, you come across non-controversial. You get your point across and you get the information out there. And somebody else who knows what you're talking about will come along and second your uh, like it and you'll find out you have more likes on, and people pay attention because you have likes on this simple comment that you made that was non-controversial. You didn't try to blast somebody out or make somebody feel like they were wrong or little, belittle someone. Make sure that what you do on social media is consistent. It is in a positive manner because nobody wants to be that you can issue constructive criticism without putting someone, making them feel this small. It's a way that you do it. Even when, when you do it with your kids, you sandwich in that you get the good and the bad and, and follow up with some good. You sandwich it in between. Just saying. So, make sure when you post on uh, social media that you're consistent. Don't let big uh, gaps go in between. Everybody forgets about you. If you're going to post once a week, post the same time every week. So they're expecting it. When I post my uh, advertisement, I try to get it on Thursday or Friday. You know it's coming. And I always try to use the same color. My signature color is red. I love red. Most of my posts have red in them. My advertisement for Ask the Nanny, most of them have red. So when you see that red and it's the same type of post. I have a, a, a what is this? A ripple. That's what it's called. I use ripple to make my commercials. And it's the same type of posting. You know it's me. Oh, that's Ask the Nanny. I know this because she's always using red and she uses the same, pro the same program all the time. Be consistent. When people see consistency out of you, they start to look forward to, oh, what she got next? Oh, what's happening next week? Oh, what's going on? They will look for you. 
Also, on social media, don't just post about your business. Get personal. Now, I'm not talking about you in the bikini at the beach. I'm talking about, oh, I got, I'm out here with um, my bakery friends. You know, uh, we're having a cook-off. If you bake or you cook or you grill or whatever you do, post pictures. People who are in like, who like other people's businesses, like yours too. If you are grilling, then you hashtag the heck out of it. Hashtags brings more people to your page. Because if they hashtag the same thing, it generates that hashtag generates your, a more audience. If you have a personal page or if you don't have a page, create a page for your business and hashtag and make it a public page. So when you hashtag, it brings the general public to your page. Just saying. If you want more business, hashtag and make it public so people can find you. If it's private, if it's set to private and only your friends, well, only your friends will see it. And only your friends will be able to uh, share it. But if you have the public, if you have your page public, the public is coming to see it. The public is coming to uh, see what you have next. They may not ever like your page, but they will like the content on your page. And if you continue to feed them good content and, and put pictures up, pictures are worth a thousand words, find articles, find whatever is related to what your business is to put out there, they will come and see what's next. Even if it's from the CBS News, if it's something that has to do with your business, post it. If it's a positive, if it's negative, if it's a warning or a tour recall or whatever, Put it out there if that's a part of your business. If something happens, if you're if you're a chef and something happens on um what is the, the latest uh chef? I love the uh uh the kids show the where the kids are a uh, top chef uh, where the kids are cooking. Um I can't remember what the name of it is, but anyway, my granddaughter wants to cook all the time. So she is always watching that show. And there are always little clips. If you have, if you're teaching kids how to cook, or you're teaching uh, baking lessons and you find a new recipe, post it. People like to see things from you to see the human side of you, and they like to see the business side of you. Make it even. Nobody wants you to shove your business down their throat all the time. They want to know that you're human, just like me. I want to know that you have problems, just like me. It makes you more believable. It makes you more trustworthy. It makes people want to follow you. It lets them know that you have a personality. They will follow you, and they are loyal to people who they like. If all you're showing is your business, they may like your business, but they won't follow you for long. Just saying. Put yourself out there. Be willing to be personable to your audience. Um, blogs, write, even if it's just two paragraphs, because you know people are so busy now, if it's more than two paragraphs, they're probably not gonna read the whole thing. They'll like the first two paragraphs. Find a picture quote. That's what I love to do. I go find quotes that I like, I'm like, oh, and something pops in my head and I'll write a few sentences about it. Put it out there, make it meaningful. Put it out there. People will come and they will like your post. Even if they don't read a word that you said, they will read the quote that you said, that you posted. And every time they like it, it promotes other people to like the algorithms in Facebook. It promotes other people to come in and like it. So put your, your po quotes out there, your blogs out there. Hi, Emily K. Thank you. Um, and uh, again, everyone, share. If you are on Facebook 
Ask your friends to share. Share your information. Share what, what's going on. Share, share, share. Just like I'm asking you all, hit the share button. Share with your groups. Share with your friends. Share it on your posts. Share, just share it all over Facebook. The more you get shared, the more attention that you get and the more great, greater audience that you get. And you get to prove yourself to a, greater, a larger audience. So, share, share, and share. Now, um, when you uh, volunteer, volunteer if you are a, uh, a newborn care specialist and you are out of work for a while, you don't have a contract coming up, volunteer at the local hospital. Go up volunteer to hold one of the babies in the NICU or to, you know, uh, be one of the baby rockers. When you go into those hospitals and you volunteer, the nurses, the doctors, and whomever else you come in contact with, you make connections. You network with those people. And somebody comes in and says, well, I'm looking for a nanny or I'm looking for, I know I'm going to need some help at night. I have just the person for you. When you go in and you volunteer and you make an impression upon people, they volunteer your name to someone else, which brings you business. That's a, it's free. It's free promotion. All you got to do is give your time and what you put out will come back to you. I'm just saying. Now, network. Now that we're on network, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Make input, make an appearance. If there's several uh, a networking meeting coming up, and you're like, "Hmm, oh, I don't want to go to them places. They don't do this. They don't do that." If you continue to not go and put yourself out there, but you want to continue to grow your business, or you want to continue to become more popular, you gotta go some places. You gotta give up that Monday night football game or the Game of Thrones and record it and put it on the DVR and tell, tell everybody, all your friends, don't tell me about it. I want to see it for myself when I get back home. But you got to put yourself out there and go to some of these meetups and go to some of these networking um, meetings so that you can put yourself out there. And another thing, if you are the smartest person in the room, you need to change rooms. Because if you're always going to places where you're the smartest person, you're not learning anything. You're giving out information, which is a good thing. But you need to learn what the person above you knows. Because if he's above you, he did something extra to get there. And you need to find out and pick his brain as to find out how did you get here. If you go to these networking uh, events, you get to pick brains. You get to, uh, as a matter of fact, I, last Sunday, we had social, uh, the Sunday social, and I came to the conclusion, I have reinvented myself. Just that quick. I have been thinking about it, but all the ladies, and they were from different backgrounds. I had lactation specialists, doulas, uh, nannies, uh, NCSs, birth workers, all of them were here at this uh, Sunday social. And because they're, I'm there at the Sunday social, I get to pick their brain. I get to see what they're up to. I get to see what, what's going on. I get to hear, hey, I need to add that to my contract. We do the same thing, but I haven't added it to my contract. I need to change this or I need to change that. You are in a room full of people who have ideas. And if you're listening to their ideas, you can build off of their ideas in your particular area. They may be over here in a doula position. I'm over here in the NCS position. But you know what? We all work with families. We all are in the birthing community. We all work with children. Whether it's before they're born as they're born or after they're born. We're all in this together. That's why you network. Because one person may be in this position, 
that position, don't be afraid to step outside of your boundaries. Don't be afraid to step outside of your comfort zone. It's amazing the things that happen outside of your comfort zone. You wouldn't believe the things that I have learned outside of my comfort zone. Now, also, when you network, you can't always be the smartest person in the room, but you can share what you know with others. Because even though you may not be the smartest, you may have a particular area that they need to know about. And you share your information, they share their information, you collaborate with one another. Don't be afraid to collaborate with people that are in the same business as you. And don't be afraid to promote them. Because the quickest way to get your business promoted is to promote someone else. When I have, I know I've had three different jobs. Four, I take that back. Four different jobs since I started, be, well, since I decided to go full time NCS. I've had four different jobs handed to me by other NCSs simply because they were already booked up. They were, uh, okay, I need a backup or I need, they said, okay, who's available? I am. Don't be afraid to step outside your comfort zone. Don't be afraid to promote them. When I'm booked up, somebody asked me, okay, guess what? This person is available. That person is available. When they post on uh, the Facebook pages, the, the job boards and all this, make sure you go and like their, their, their uh, whatever they're posting. Go and like it. it. It takes nothing to just hit the like button. But better still, hit the love button. Because the love button gets you more... Uh, traffic generated to your state, what your post is. Hit the love button or the wow button. It generates more uh, traffic to where you're going. It's all about ag algorithms in, within the Facebook page. Use LinkedIn. A lot of us don't use LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a good source. And you can link in from different pe people from different countries. I got linked in to someone to Adele who lives in Canada and this past April I went to Canada and I was a part of Nanny Jamboree simply because I linked in to someone who had like minds with like me on LinkedIn like-minded people but don't be afraid to step outside of your comfort zone and link in with some other people because other people outside of your comfort zone, they can help you too. Authors, children book, children's book authors. Now, I, I have gotten six books for free. All because I linked in on LinkedIn. We got connected on LinkedIn. Imagine all the free stuff you can get. I've gotten baby bottles. I have gotten uh, sleepwear uh, for babies. All because I got LinkedIn. Don't be afraid to use LinkedIn. It's a professional uh, website. And if you're looking for a job, put it out there on LinkedIn. You never know who's looking. Make connections outside of your little circle. When you make connections outside of your little circle, you don't know who they know. And that next person who they know they can introduce you to people that can hire you and take you to the next level. So, get connected. Okay, Emily, I will teach you how to use LinkedIn. It's, I was confused too. My husband taught me. And I will teach you. And I didn't know it, but you can write articles on LinkedIn. And publish them on LinkedIn. And people come by and read your articles and like them and make comments. 
and it goes out to their friends that you made comment. They made a comment on your article. It goes out to their friends. So-and-so commented on this. So-and-so liked this, which leads you and, and all their friends and their connections to you on LinkedIn. Just like Facebook, it leads you, leads their friends to you. And you don't know who's going to read what you say. And it will open opportunities for you. I'm just saying. Thank you. I, thank you, Emily. Yes, we have a LinkedIn date. Okay. Now, if you are not networking, create your own network. All you got to do, invite friends. Go to a restaurant. It doesn't have to cost you any money. Go to a restaurant. Meet at a restaurant. They pay for their own food. You get to network. You all get to share. Everybody pays for their own. But it is a networking. And if you are networking, it does not have to call, cost you any money. Only thing it will cost you, if you go and you want to network, and you just get you a little appetizer for $5 and a, and a drink, iced tea, and nachos. Everybody else can order whatever they want to order because they're taking care of their own bill. But you are there, you are in the room, you are making connections, you are collaborating with people, and you are learning. That's the main reason you're there. Just saying. So now, also, we talked about stepping outside of your comfort zone. As long as you stay in your comfort zone, it's not going, you can get to a certain level and you're going to just top out. That glass ceiling is going to come crashing down on you. And that's it. Step outside, bust through the walls. And I know I sound country, but that's, that's just me. Bust through the walls. Come outside of your comfort zone. Venture into places that you've never been to. I'd never been to Canada. Not Well, I have been to Canada. I'd never been to Vancouver. I rented me a car, turned on my GPS on my phone, hooked it up to AirPlay, and I found places to go. As a matter of fact, a little girl, I went to uh, Gran uh, Granville Island. I'm walking around. I just gotten through presenting at, at, at Nanny, Nanny Jamboree. I hadn't been back to the hotel. I went out there to, to shop for my husband and friends back here. A little girl, four years old, comes up to me. Are you a princess? Because I had on a big uh, a flared out skirt. And I had a necklace that, that was, uh, it was like a pendant necklace. And mom and grandma came over. She talked to me for 30 minutes. This little girl, they ended up taking pictures with me. Made me feel like a celebrity. And because they were there talking to me, people came by looking and stopped to listen. You never know who's listening to your conversations. You never know what connections you are making. When I, as I'm walking around, one of the people who stopped to listen asked me if I had a business card. And I ended up handing out my business card. I have no clue who it was. But they asked me, they said they heard me talking to the little girl and thought it was the sweetest thing. Do I have a business card? Now, I don't know if they'll connect with me or not. But they have my business card at hand. One little conversation. One little stopping to, you know, step outside my comfort zone. Because I don't like to go places that, you know, I'm not familiar with. Or somebody's not with me to help guide me around. I got. I started coming out of of my comfort zone. You need to come out of yours too. You'll be amazed at what will happen. Now, support, uh, support and promote other businesses. We already talked about that. Support your fellow uh, people. The the vending place that I told you I was going to in August. I called up somebody and said, I want you to come and sit at my table with me. Yes, we're in direct competition, but we work together. We collaborate with one another because I know 
I give her business. She gives me business. We go back and forth. And that keeps both of us in business. If she can't handle it, she can't do the job, who's the first person they're going to call you? The person that you are helping to promote. That's the, oh, let me call Angela. She helped me to get this job. And I got two at the same time. Let me hand one of these off to her. Promote other people. It costs you nothing. There's plenty of business out there to go around. And what's for you is going to be for you. And can't nobody steal it from you. I'm just saying. Now, understand your target audience. If you are going to a new city or if you are researching, you want to, you have this plan. Research your target audience. If you are selling cakes, are you going to take your cakes to sell at somewhere where there's a, to a, a, a restaurant? Or are you going to take it to somebody's office? Which one do you think will readily sell your cakes? Research your market. Research and see what everybody else is doing. And you can follow that stream. And as you follow that stream that everybody else is following, and you pick up something new, Switch streams. Grab that something new. Add it to your 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 uh, wheelhouse and keep rolling. It puts you just above them. Hmm, she's doing something different. Let me try this over here. Hey, y'all, she's doing something else. Y'all, come on. And they bring people with them. They bring their friends with them to to because you change one thing. Don't be afraid to change. Don't be afraid. To fail. Learn from your failures. And find something positive in your failures. Because if you can't find something positive and you're always looking at the negative, negative will come to you and you will stay in that negative mood. If you find something positive even in your mistakes, well, I know not to do that again. Next time I'll do this, 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 and leave that part out because that didn't work. Learn from your mistakes. Find something positive in it, even if it's what not to do the next time. And don't give up trying. Consistency. Consistency, consistency, consistency. As a nanny, we preach consistency to our parents, to everybody. Please, keep them on the schedule. If you keep them on the schedule, if you're consistent with the schedule, They'll learn. If you're consistent, 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 they'll learn. Be consistent in your business. Be consistent with what you post online. Be consistent in your hard work. Have a plan in place. I'm going to do this. I'm going to accomplish this, this, and this today. And set out to accomplish it. And don't get upset with yourself if you aren't able to accomplish everything on your list. Because... Sometimes, in order to get one thing accomplished, it takes five or six different steps that you were not planning on doing. But be willing to go through that, those, the, that, those steps to get it done. Now, be willing to sweep the floor before you buy the building. When I say that, I mean be willing to start at the bottom and work your way up. Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither is your business going to be built in a day. Don't get disappointed because you didn't make a sale today, or you don't make a sale next week, or you didn't make a sale in a month. Don't give up. Keep being consistent. Keep putting yourself out there. Even if you're not selling anything, put stuff out there. Find a new recipe. Find a new uh, technology. If you're in the technology business, if you're sewing something, continue to do things and put them out there. Blast them out there. Let everybody know, hey, I may not be selling nothing, but I'm still here. I'm still in the game. I still got some skin in the game. Be consistent and doing what you're doing. Don't be afraid to fail because nothing beats a failure but a try. Keep on trying.
if I had given up and stopped doing Ask the Nanny, there is no way in the world I would be right here where I am today in doing the things that I only dreamed about. It wouldn't be happening if I gave up. And trust me, there were many times when I closed down and I said, bye-bye, I'll see y'all later. And I cried. Oh my God, that was the worst show ever. How in the world? And then after I get done with my pity party, I'm like, okay, so what did you do wrong? What are you going to do the next time to make it better? How can you be better prepared for the next show? What new idea are you coming up? What are you researching to find to find a new idea, a new subject, a new whatever it is to bring to the community at large? You got to be constantly on it. Self-care, do it. Do it for yourself because otherwise you'll beat yourself up. You need to balance out that self-care in there. Even in all your hard work, find time for yourself. Find time to spend with your friends. Find time to give your brain a break. To, to come and say, Hoosa. You need that. And most of the time, it's your friends who make you laugh and, you know, just giggle until you pee. Yeah. Those type of friends... You need all that because laughter is good medicine. You need to go to the nail spa and get your nails done or sit, put your feet in the water and just, you know, swing your legs in the pool and think and just calm and cool or just take a nap. Whatever it is, don't forget about self-care because you need your brain refreshed in order to come up with new ideas to stay on top of things. Now, uh, study, research, find out the latest whatever in your field, whatever it is you're going for. We are not just nannies. We are entrepreneurs. And study and find out what's going on in the field that you want to be in. Or this new business venture that you're going into. Find the ins and the outs. Don't ever stop studying. Don't ever stop researching. Don't ever stop trying to find, okay, what's the latest in this? What's the newest in this? What's the newest baby equipment? You're the baby equipment expert? Keep looking. Find the recalls. Find the this. Find the parents. That you, if you are a resource to your audience and they can trust you and say, well, why don't you try this? Well, why don't you try that? I don't have the answers, but I can tell you who does. Don't think you have to know it all. If you have connections and you have network and you know somebody who does know, guess what? Don't be afraid to refer them to the person who knows what you don't know. Because if they, you refer someone to them when they don't know and they know you know, they'll refer someone to you. My back needs scratching, and so does yours. So why don't we just scratch each other's backs? How do you stay on track when teaching a video? I'm going to show you. You see all these notes? That's how you stay on track. You have notes, bullet points, so that you can stay on track and keep talking. That's why you keep seeing me look at my notes. That's how you stay on track. Now, um, have a sense of discernment. There's this little gut feeling. I like to, now for me, I let the Holy Spirit lead me. And some people say it's a shoulder tap. It is a gut feeling. It's a, ooh, I didn't, mm -mm. That, that something just a breeze blew by me and it didn't feel good. Whatever that is, trust it. Trust your gut. Trust the, the guiding of, of the Holy Spirit, whatever whoever's leading you. If it doesn't feel good to you and it's questionable, sleep on it. Don't make a decision right away. Sleep on it. Give yourself time to think. Give yourself time to walk away from the situation. Do I need this? Is this right for me? 
uh, am I being cheated? Let me do the math on that. And when you have questions and you have answered all your questions, your pros and your cons, then you make a wise decision and a well-educated decision instead of saying, well, this don't feel right, but okay. And don't let anybody tell you, well, it's going, going, gone. You know, you got to make a decision right now. If you got to make a quick decision, some things you do. But if it doesn't feel right to you and you got to make a quick decision like that, I would suggest you second think that. Because sometimes when it doesn't feel right to you and it's just that inkling feeling in you that's like, hmm, think about it. Sleep on it. Because I guarantee you, if it's going to be gone like that, and then tomorrow it's gone like that, and then the next day it's gone like that from the same person, it ain't gone like that. They just trying to get you. Just saying. Now, uh, never be afraid to reinvent yourself. I have reinvented myself time and time again. When things are not working, when things are not going the way that you think they should be going, or your body starts breaking down, which is why I started, um, I started um, doing uh, overnight care because my body was talking to me and I know what I needed. And a couple of weeks ago, my body started talking to me again and says, look, this is what needs to happen. You need to make some changes. This, you know, Think about your health. Think about this. Think about that. Life changes happen to you and cause you to reinvent yourself. Don't be afraid to reinvent yourself. Like Joyce Meyer says, feel the fear and do it anyway. Now, I have a few minutes left. And I'm going to bring Miss Kimberly on here and she's going to show her being in the right place and following her dream got her to the next level. Hi, Miss Kim. Hello. How are you, Miss Kim? I'm sorry, I was um, can, you, can you hear me? I ate a Z in there. <laughs> no, it was good. I was listening like, oh, that's a good one. Oh. Can you hear me well? I can hear you well. And now I can see. Okay, good. I had to change glasses. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell us. Good. Because I know you took a class and it led you where? It led me to actually be a panelist um, at one of the community colleges in New York. And they did a, I guess they do an annual, it was their 13th annual um, entrepreneurs, entrepreneur, I guess they call it um, a summit. So it was kind of like a day conference, which was really nice. So um, it was all, most of, most of the, the, the people that were there were either teachers um, that lectured there and their students that are, are part of a business club that they have. Mm -hmm. So they're all um, college students aspiring to be entrepreneurs or are already entrepreneurs, you know, while they're in school. So they had um, different people from different backgrounds come and talk to the students. They got to ask questions. Uh, they had three different panels. I was on one. Um, and the, the whole conference was about passion, pursuit, and there's another P, passion, pursuit, and profit. So it was interesting to, to see like all the different people and where they are in their businesses and how they got there, where they started, you know, did some of them follow their college degree and go through that? Did some of them have college degrees 
you know, everybody came from a different background, but, you know, they all had that common thread of wanting more and wanting to build and just taking what they had and using what they had and um, creating something new. Cool. So it was good. So you got to be the subject expert on... <laughs> And I'm saying, when you are take class, when you do research, when you are in follow your heart and you do things, you get asked to do things like you got to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I thought it was really interesting because I was asked to go, and um, and I'm like, oh, you know, I don't do too much talking in front of people. You know, I, I'll mentor people on the side, but you know. And they were just like, well, we know that you'd be really great for this. And, you know, we got a recommendation and you should come. So, um, you know, I think it was Stephanie that was just like, what are you going to do new? Or like, what are you going to do to step out? And I was like, well, it did come around the same time. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do this. So it was really nice because uh, Patsy, Patsy Andell, she was just like, if you go, I'm going to, I'm going to come and support you. And she did. And so we had a really nice time. Exactly. And, the same. Yeah, yeah. We had a really nice time, and she was even saying she was like, "I learned so much." She was like, "You know, I, I felt like that that was a conference for me, and it was actually a closed conference just for um, the students there. So there was the only people that had access to it were the people that went to the school and that were part, you know, that were part of the club, but they opened it up to people that were in the school. Okay. So. Yeah, so it was it was really good. Um, you know, I got to talk to them about my background and, you know, just what I, you know, what I do and how I work. And a lot of people don't realize that as nannies, we actually do multiple things. A lot of us have different backgrounds and then we bring it into our field. And um, so they were trying to figure out, they were like, so you nanny? And you do HR. <laughs> I'm like, I was like, yeah, I I do a lot of things because I saw a need and I went ahead and, you know, that's what I do. So I was like, for some of my, you know, some of my clients, they have dogs and they don't have time to take their dogs where they have to go. Well, guess what? I'm a dog trainer and I also am a certified groomer. So wow. I I make extra money outside of my contract. And so the whole conference was about the gig economy where they're saying seven, I think it's about 76% of today's youth are all entrepreneurs and they're moving in that direction of they all have their own job and they're all pulling in money on the side. They all have like some kind of side hustle and um, you know, to be prepared for that, you know, generation that's coming up, you, you actually have to be doing more than just your regular job. Right. So um, they talked about that. And I think what like a lot of people don't realize is that there are certain there are certain jobs that when you're in when there's a recession that never stop, people will always spend money. I think the top three is like people will always spend money on their pets, even in a recession. People will always spend money on their kids and people will always. Exactly. People will always spend money on believe it or not, healthcare. They're like, not healthcare, like as in they're whether they're sick or not, but like their nails, getting their hair done, their makeup. People won't stop doing that. They if they if they broke, they want to look good. So that's like the number one thing. It is you laugh, but it's true. They have <laughs> they do. They want to look good even if they're broke and they like are on their last dollar. So. There's another quarter. Okay, I need 50 more cents. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, that's why I like people. Yeah, people that do like Mary Kay and stuff, they all, they'll never go out of business because people will always still buy. Yeah. You know, so. Yes. They may not buy that's as a, much as they used to, but they got to have that concealer and they got to have that. They do. And that lipstick. <laughs> the three things that's the three goals that's the thing <laughs> yeah so it's like you have to kind of know where people's money is going mm -hmm. and as an entrepreneur just you know get in line with where the money is and if that's where the money is hey patsy i was just talking about you um if that's where the money is then that's what you should be you know moving toward 
So, you know, just talking in general, I ended up talking a lot about HR stuff because they, they are younger, you know, and they're going out into the, you know, into the working workforce. And, um, and I think one of the things that I was saying that I tell everybody is you should always have a profession and then have a backup. That's right. Like always. So if something happens and something goes left, you always have a skill to fall behind on. So like me, I just happen to have two skills. I'm a nanny and I'm also a dog groomer. So anywhere I go, I can get a job as a nanny or a dog groomer. So not everybody can do that. So, you know, like that's one of the things that I was saying, you know, is always like a good thing. Um, and then I think the other thing that we talked about a lot and it came up in every panel, all three of the panels, they talked about, um, you know, weaknesses and your strengths. And I was saying as an HR person, anytime you go on an interview or even if you're um, presenting your business, you talk about your weaknesses and your strengths. Like they'll ask you, one of the questions is like, what's your, what's your strengths? You know, as a nanny, what's your strength? Or as, you know, whatever you're doing, what's your strengths and what's your weaknesses? And I was saying um, the best thing about it is, you know you and you've had other jobs. So if you know your weaknesses, you need to make them, you know, turn them into strengths and make them work for you so that you don't look weak in any area. Um, so I was using the example at the, at the summit. I was telling them when I go in and I'm faced with that that conversation, I said, for one, I know my, my strength is um, interviewing. If I want a job, I can go in and I can get it. That's not, it's never been a problem for me because I interview them. They don't interview me yeah. because I know, you know, I know what I like mm -hmm. and I know how to do it so well. So um, that usually works for me. But um, when they, when they get to that, what's your strength? You know, what's your weakness? What do you love about your job? What do you hate about your job? And I'll tell them, I know my weakness is I'm slow, period. <laughs> like, <laughs> I procrastinate. I get everything done before my day is over. But, you know, I know that I'll procrastinate because I would rather be with the kids than cleaning up something. Yeah. Or, you know, I would rather, you know, do homework with the kids than to go and cook. So, like, I know that that is, that's my weakness. So I said, you know, if I have a parent that's an A-type personality, and they're just like, oh, you know, hey, those dishes are piling up in the sink. Could you kind of put those away? I'm going to, I'll say yes, but I'm going to finish doing whatever I'm doing. So if that's homework, if it's doing something else with the kids, I'm going to finish doing what I'm doing. So I'm not afraid in an interview to tell people, listen, if you want something done now, you have to say, hey, Kim, can you do that now? So then that, in a way, causes less situations and less problems for me and that person. So if they know that I that that I give them that freedom to say, hey, can you do this now? They'll actually do that instead of saying, you know, going to the husband or the wife later and say, hey, I asked her to do this and she did it like four hours later and I feel this way. And then we have to sit down and have a talk. Um, do you use a, a microphone? Oh, Stacy, is it? Go ahead. I'll I'll answer as soon as you finish your answer. Oh, okay. So, so um, about, about what okay. <laughs> so usually, you know, stuff like that, those are things that I know is a weakness for me, but I turn it into a strength and I give them that opportunity to kind of build a relationship with me at the beginning, knowing like, oh, she's, you know, she's not, um, you know, the type of person that I can't approach. So, you know, it's different when you work in different settings and different jobs but when you're working on a team and you're going in for a job like you want to be able to have that type of relationship so we did talk like a lot about that and um you know just different people just hearing the different people's perspectives like you know owners of companies who make millions of dollars talking about weaknesses and strengths and they even admitted like you know hey i still have weaknesses with this and this is still an issue for me and since I can't do this, I hire people, which makes jobs for other people. And um, so, you know, like you just never know like who you meet and different things that they'll say about the workforce and being an entrepreneur and like what they feel is a hard thing as an entrepreneur and what they feel is easy. So 
It was, it was a really good experience. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you a question. I'm gonna answer her. I'm gonna ask you your question, a question to you first, let you think about it, and then I'm gonna answer, uh, what's her name, Stacy? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna mm-hmm. Stacy's question, and then I'm gonna come back to you. Now, what transpired from you going to speak on this panel? Now, you think about that. And while I answer uh, Stacy, um, the device that I'm using is a iPhone 8, I mean, iPhone 7. And I'm not using a recording device. I mean, well, I'm using the microphone to the phone. And what you're seeing is me on my phone talking, you know, doing FaceTime in my office with, with Kim. And that's all I use. Now, I do want to get some better equipment because I want to go to the next level. But I got to get a little more hustle on so I can buy that (laughs) expensive equipment that I want. Uh, Because if I'm going to invest, I want to invest in the best the first time instead of, you know, investing in something. And then six months later, I'm going to need something else. So make wise investments. That's another thing as an entrepreneur make wise investments so now what transpired from you going to talk on that panel um i would say for one i definitely i'm already a confident person when it comes to what i do but i would say that that took it to a whole nother level it definitely made me feel better because i love to share knowledge i love to share anything that i've learned because most of everything that I've learned came from people mentoring me. Um, So, you know, I feel like it's a pay it forward kind of thing. Um, Also, a lot of networking, that definitely happened. I think before we all left, um, everybody kind of turned on their LinkedIn and it'll do like the the LinkedIn or do like what's whoever is close to you in proximity. We're like, oh, there you are, okay. You know, so, that was, you know, that was definitely something I met people that I normally wouldn't have, you know, met in any other situation. So, um, like one of the guys I had met before, but only once. And so he was just like, I remember you from somewhere. And so we realized where we remembered each other from. And we started talking about, do you have, like, he was asking me about my website. Cause he was like, I saw that you were trying to build a website. And I was like, I built one. I hated it. I didn't like it. Like I'll never put it out. <laughs> so he was like, okay, I'll get with you. And that's what he does. So stuff <laughs> like that. Yeah, the networking thing is is serious. <laughs> and people will volunteer to help you do things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was dollars to do. Exactly. So that was like, it was so cool. Cause I was just like, listen, I took that thing down. It was so horrible. He was like, what? <laughs> So I was like, I would not send anybody to that. Um, But um, also out of it, you know, uh, my name got, you know, passed around because nobody knew who I was before that. Um, People came up to me afterwards and were like, I'm a nanny and I'm, you know, I go to this school and such and such. such." So it was really nice. You know, you you get to meet people that you just would not have known, you know, so you get to link people with other, you know, with other people. I linked them, you know, which is like told the girl like, hey, join my nanny circle because that's what, you know, the group that we're in and we always do stuff and she's in New York. So she's just, you know, she really didn't know anybody. She's, you know, just coming into the business. And so stuff like that, stuff like that definitely happened. Um, I'm sure it'll open other doors as far as, um, me being able to go and do something like that again. Um, and I believe, I haven't seen it yet, but they did like a post interview because one of the, um, I guess, the chairman of the group has a LinkedIn page and mm-hmm. has, he does video, videography stuff. So he did a post show and posted it on his show. I haven't seen it yet. So now it'll actually be, you know, video, you know, put out there. So all of his, all of his connections, the ones that truly follow him, if he has a large following, 
if only 10% yeah. of the people see you and they are influencing mm -hmm. people, they will call you and ask you. Yeah. I would take yeah. one time for you to share your information and you are very smart about your information. That's why you need to study and you are <laughs> in the right place at the right time. Yeah. And you offer and you volunteered your information. They didn't have to drag it out of you. When right. you're the subject matter expert and people find value in what you have to say and they find value in what you are doing, they will remember you, they will link you in, and they will come back and say, This lady, link get, connect with her on me. Right. <laughs> I'm telling you, I have found several guests that have been on Ask the Nanny from LinkedIn. Y'all didn't know that, but I did. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's and that's how it is. And then also, I'm on your show, so Stacey, that happened sorry. after. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, thank you, Stacy. She just gave me a compliment. Thank you. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was saying, and then after, I also ended up on your show tonight. Hello. So see, see, that was post. There you go, post. And I brought her on as a prime example of when you are in one place and you network, you share your information, you are there and you're connecting and you are a subject matter expert, which means you have study and it is a target audience. And then you share what you know with others afterwards and connect them mm -hmm. you be a connector of connecting other connections and become a connector when you put people together when they get a make a deal guess what sometimes you get a finder's fee another stream of That's true a referral fee as some of us call it you know finder's fee is way back in the day referral fees is way back, back. <laughs> Oh, 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 don't you just me. dating don't yourself. <laughs> we, now we all know. Now we know. Now you know. But just from one appearance, just from one thing, people see you mm -hmm. and they take a liking to you because you have something valuable to bring to the table in your area of expertise. I told you all before, before I moved to Dallas, before I moved anywhere, mm -hmm. I research, I go and I study and I tell them I'm going to be here on this date. And before I get to town, I have five or six interviews lined up. So by the, yep. the following week, I give myself a week to get the house together. By the following week, I'm working. Somebody's up. And we, yeah, and we, but we have that type of job as well. Yeah. So, I mean, if you, if you stay in your lane and then, you know, I mean, even with one, I remember one job I had where the mom at the beginning, she let me know, like, I always come home by 530. I cook dinner for everybody. So when I get here, you could just leave. You don't have to stay. So she cooked every night. I know she was tired because she came from work. She cooked every night, but she wanted it to be, you know, how she wanted it to be. And so I remember when I worked for them, I think for Mother's Day one year, I decided I was going to, like, it was a Sunday, I decided I was going to cook, and that was her Mother's Day gift. Her Mother's Day gift was I made, I made dinner for the week. So I did, like, this tofu salad that I knew that they would like. I put some stuff on the grill. I put some stuff, you know, I think I made some salmon or something in the broiler, and I think I made, I put something in a crock pot, but it was enough food for the week. And maybe all she had to do was make sides. Right. So I was just like, you know, this is your mother's day gift. Happy mother's day. You don't have to cook all week. I'm out. Cause it was on a Sunday. I was like, okay, bye. You know, I'll see y'all tomorrow morning. When they went to redo my contract, they were like, well, if, what if we add in that we'll pay you, you know, extra $75 a week and you can cook for us like two or three days out of the week. I was like, you can go ahead and add that. That is not a problem for me. So on top of my salary, I made extra money, but I made it doing what I normally would do at any other job. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. 
it was it was a perk for me because that I didn't, it was seventy five dollars I wouldn't have had, and all I did was cook all of it on one day like I did the yeah, last so time. I'm already there. <laughs> you already had the time, so it's not like you had to go from one job drive right to another, to another job to stay there for like 30, 40 minutes to cook dinner exactly. and leave again. Exactly. Yeah. So it was, it was a come up for my pockets. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and but you know it was. You know, some people, some people actually do that for a living. You know, their side hustle is cooking. Like, oh, I cook for people and, you know, I cater something. I was doing it for my own job. They had a dog. That was extra money. You know, I just did what I, what I normally do. And a lot of people don't realize that a lot of the things that they normally do, other people don't know how to do. A lot of the things that, like, is a skill for them is normal. And they can actually make money from it. So you kind of have to look at, you know, a lot of people, they get stuck with being like starting their own business. Like, well, what can I do and what can I do well? What you can do well is just like write, write down all the things that you love to do that you normally do. There are some people that knit and that crochet and they actually sit and do it while they're watching TV and they're like done with stuff. I started, pro I got like 10 projects that I started. They're not done. So that is not something that I would say that I love to do. Yeah, but I know people that they'll sit there and they'll binge watch like Game of Thrones and they've like knitted a whole sweater or, or blanket or something. Right. You know, so you charge for your time. What would you charge for your time? I just did a blanket. It it's seven hours. If I'm charging ten dollars, guess what? I'm gonna sell it for like seventy bucks. So you know, what I mean, and somebody will buy it because somebody will be like, "Oh, that's really nice. It's handmade," okay. and they do it. Well, I, yeah. I just created, um, well, I didn't just create it. It was something that I've done with my jobs before, but I taught, I had a consultation. One of my NCS parents said, Miss Angela, my children are at a stage that I don't understand. I'm a brand new parent. This is my first time doing this. Can I call you and talk to you? Do you do consultations? Yes, I do. Right. So how much do you charge per hour? When can we get started? So as I'm talking to her and I'm answering some of her questions, she asked me a question and I said, you know what? Uh, she said, well, I kind of don't do this. I said, you know what? I know how to do that. I will come to your house and show you how to do that. Or I can prepare it here at my house and bring it to you already done. And she was like, okay, see, my kids going to learn how to sleep. They're going to learn how to eat. They're going to learn how to... <laughs> She's going on up. Oh, because of you. And it became another stream of income. Right. Right there on the spot. Think. When you're thinking and people need your services, offer them. Because it's not going to cost you that much. It's something that you love to do. You already know how to do it. You know how to do it better than them and quicker than them. So by the time it takes them three or four hours to do it, you got it done in 45 minutes. Because it's exactly. already something that you have already in your wheelhouse. You have a method to doing it. And you know the quickest way possible to get it done. Yep, it's true. I think the only the only issue that I find <laughs> that I have is that I love what I do so much. So like when I do parent consulting, they usually get way more than what they pay for for yes. me. <laughs> I think we've talked about I, that before. I, like, I, listen, I, if your sessions are like an hour and a half, hour. don't give them no more than that unless they pay for it. I'll be sitting there talking to you for like three hours about your kids and stuff that, you yeah. know, because it's what I do. It's what I love to do. So, you know, that's, that's natural for me. So even like with my business, when I explained it to people and they were just like, I don't get it. And then I explained it to them and they were like, yeah, I totally see it now. Like I can see you helping people, you know, hire nannies and going through the process and how to, how to start and doing parent consulting and, you know, helping them with their kids. Like, you know, I'll have people, they'll call like, listen, I have a three-year-old, they're bad. What do I do about this? This is what he's doing. This one is doing this, you know, and I'm just, you know, I'll tell them, like, I have to see them. I have to have a relationship with them. And then I can start working with them. Because you can't discipline kids that you don't really have a relationship right. with. You can, but it won't last. You know, but, like, to make changes. You know, so stuff like that. A lot of people, hi, Sherry. Um, a lot of people don't hi, Sherry. Hi. realize that, like, we do so well with the kids that we have. Because we've built a relationship with them. 
and they, you know, they respect us, they listen to us. So we're able to like put in, you know, um, we're able to put in things that they can actually live on every day because they see us all the time. And even after we go, those things still stay. When they're with their parents, they may do something else. But when they're with us, you know, they already they know. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it's times that my kids, they'll go to do something and they know it's not right. They know. Hello. And they'll look at their mom and, and then they'll look at me and then they'll look at their mom. And I'll just, I'll say like, you have this look on your face that you're about to do something that you know you shouldn't do. So let me let you know in advance, you will get in trouble, whether mom is here or not. And they're just like, all right. And, like, <laughs> and they just kind of walk away. Like, you know, like, let me just help you figure this out before you even, like, yeah, like, let's not even go there. Let's have a good night. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But I tell you, it has been, um, when you think about it, when you do these things, and I'm so glad you, you you came on and shared your experience of just networking, just stepping outside of your comfort zone in business, which how it will mm -hmm. grow your business and grow your network and grow the people that you know and get you people to help you for free. They offer you, and even if it's not for free, I yeah. mean, Thing. If he offers you, if he says you need to pay for it, I bet you he'll give you a discount. Well, I normally charge this, but I'm gonna charge right. you this much since since you were at the forum and you were helping me. You know, I learned something from exactly. You. Yeah, for sure. Exchange. Um, I've had friends uh, who normally charge certain amounts. Okay, well, I do this for you, and you do this for me, and no money exchange. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you're more of an expert at this, and I'm more of an expert at that. And we just bring our meeting of the minds together and we'll, both of us will profit and, and benefit from it. Exactly. Yeah. And you, and you get that, like, it's not, even when we were at the, the summit, you know, people were saying, well, how do I, you know, one of the girls asked a question directly to me because they had, you know, question and answer time. And she was like, well, I'm going to, you know, I work in this field, but I want to get into to HR and how do I do this? And how do I get people to, you know, help me? And, and I told her, I said, you know what, people get confused. I think when a lot of times you hear about everybody is doing internships, oh, I have to intern here. They're not going to pay me anything. I'm just running around or they give me a little something, but I'm doing this internship and I'm starting at the bottom and I'm doing this. I said, you can get a job. You can get a regular job but find a fantastic boss that is like loves their job. And if you are inquisitive and if you're good at your job, they will mentor you without you even asking them. Yes. Without asking people that love their job and love to really teach, they will give you information for free and you can still be getting paid. Hello. And people don't get that. They don't get it. My sister is online. My sister Monica is online. And when I went, when I started grooming, I started grooming um, when I was a teenager because I had a dog and my mom was like, grooming costs 45 to $50. I'm not paying for no dog to get a $50 haircut. You better learn how to do it on yourself, on your own. I actually had to teach myself because my mom was just like, I'm not doing it. I'm not paying for it. And um, so I had got, you know, I, I taught myself and then eventually I got, you know, a little job. And um, I was able to get them groomed sometimes. But for the most part, I taught myself how to, how to groom. And one, and I was looking into, I was a nanny at the time, but I was looking into going to grooming school. And the grooming school was actually about $10,000 at the time. So I was just like, well, I'll work as a nanny. I'll go to grooming school. And then I'll have the certification as well. I groomed her dog for her. We went to Petco. We went to Petco, me and my sister. We had the dog freshly groomed. And one of the girls walked up to her and was like, oh my gosh, who did your dog? That dog looks fabulous, blah, blah, blah. You know, who groomed, like, where did you go? And she was like, oh, my sister did it. And so she was like, oh, wow, is your sister a professional groomer? Like, cause she did a great job. And she was like, well, she's not a professional, but she's about to go to school for it, you know? but she does grooming, you know, at home. And so she was like, is she looking for a job? Because we hire groomers 
and we train them like so they can get certified here and she could get paid while she's doing it she was like give her you know give her my name give her the... and my sister turned around and was like you want to work here <laughs> <laughs> And the lady started, you know, the lady just started laughing. And she was like, oh, you're the sister. And I'm like, yeah, I'm the sister. So I literally got the job the next day. I trained. And when I trained, they were all shocked because they were like, you taught yourself. And I'm like, yeah. And so what they were saying is they were like, "You after you learn this, you'll be better than anybody here because you actually taught yourself at home. And I didn't know that they even, at the time, I didn't even know they made dog clippers. So I used to do it with the kitchen scissors. Wow. And then I switched over oh, to the little, right. So I switched over to like the little hair scissors when I got older. I was like, oh, I can buy some scissors. You know, I thought when you say you groom a dog and you cut the hair, that you use scissors. So when I got there and they were like, no, honey, we use clippers for everything. Well, what ended up happening is once I got certified, I would, a lot of times I would do, I would still do hand scissoring because that's what I felt comfortable with because that's how I learned. And so one of the girls brought me to the side and she said, what you're doing is a specialty. The only people that really hand scissor are people that, that do dog shows, dog grooming shows. She said, so if you're going to do that here, you need to charge properly. So I ended up getting double money. You doing less girl. because I could take on different dogs that had to be hand scissored. So that was, that ended up being my specialty. So when I became a, a salon manager for Petco, I was training, I trained people, which brought in extra money. I, I had, look, I had a, a mostly, I would say a 90% black staff because I got to hire them because I was the manager where a lot of the stores barely had any black people there in Cleveland at the Petco's. So stuff like that, when you put, you know, your skills and you really train yourself and you try and be the best at your craft, you know, it's not too many people that can, they can look at you and say, oh, I may not like you, but your skill speaks for itself. When I did HR, like I said, at the, at the summit, I was the youngest HR executive um, in that bill, in that, in that, that whole like company, I was 27. I did not have an HR degree. I didn't like, I, I came in, I worked, I did what I had to do. You know, they trained me really well. The people that did train me and a lot of people didn't like me because they were like, well, you don't have an HR degree. You know, I could have taken that job because I'm an executive for this, this department. And I could have came over cause I'm an admin executive administrator, but it was my job and I did it well. And my supervisors were like, we're not, we're not uh, pushing you out. We're going to let you stay here as long as you want. Like to the point where they offered me to go to um, college. They were going to, they were like, well, eventually the HR director is going to leave. He's going to retire. Do you want the position? We'll help you go to school. We'll pay for it. You know, so that's how you want to be so good at what you do and put <laughs> everything in it so that people will say, you're good at what you do. There's no denying it. And then you can decide what you want to do after that. That's right. So I, that's how it is. I have always taught my children, be productive citizens. I don't care if you are a ditch digger. Be the best ditch digger that is yep. that whatever crew you are in. Go the extra mile. Do that because it will, it will annoy people. Because oh you trying to do mm -hmm. it's up to so and so and so and so. No. Yeah. But you will get recognized by the people above you. And the people above you will recognize, well, he did this. Who did this? He did. Well, who did that? <laughs> he did. Well, who did that? He did. <laughs> it's true. Hey, guess, who's, guess who's gonna go gonna get promoted? He is. He is. Because you took the time to go the extra mile. I always, always, always tell them, ask, you know, when you're three or four days on the job, am I doing this right? Am I being, you know, mm -hmm. is everything going according to plan? Do I need to do something differently? Because the last thing you want to do is learn something wrong from your coworkers and they're yeah. doing it wrong 
which causes you to do it wrong. And when you're doing it wrong, and then everybody gets come, the, the, the hammer comes down, You the hammer coming down on you too. Exactly. You the right way and ask them, you know, please help, you know, inspect what I'm doing. Am I doing this right? No, you need to be doing, according to the book, you're supposed to be doing this, this. Well, learn it the right mm -hmm. way. And that way, yep. the people that come behind you, you can teach them the right way. And that way, they have longevity in their job. Because mm -hmm. just as sure as the district manager going to come over there at some point in time, why are all these people doing mm -hmm. it wrong and you don't know who are doing it right? Well, I think you need to be leading them so you can teach them how to do it right. Yes, they're going to be mad at you. Yes, they're not going to like mm -hmm. you. Because you learned the right way. You took the time and you took, you were very professional about it and you took the initiative and you learned it the right way. You did it right. the right way. You did, you went the extra mile. So when you go and do those extras, it earned you the right to have that human sir, human resources job like you wanted. And it's true. everybody's mad at you because I got a degree. I got a this. I got a piece of paper that says this and that and the other. Well, guess what? Do you have the skills? And that was the thing. And I mean, I had people that I, like, people, I remember this one situation when I was working doing HR, um, because the HR department had ended up losing the director, the, the, it was HR, it was payroll, so they were all rolled up in one. And I was the executive assistant for both. So I had to learn payroll and, you know, all the stuff that went with payroll what? and compensation. So, <laughs> yeah, it was a lot going on. So um, one of the things that I was in charge charge of was keeping track of people's um, vacation time, their sick time, their, you know, vacation time, personal time. And so I had this little program where I had to input all the information um, on Excel, I had did this really nice spreadsheet, but all the information had to be input. I didn't have time because I had to take on other responsibilities. So I started, they, they gave me, they gave me permission. I started hiring people to do my job. So they came in and they worked under me, but because I didn't have room in my office for them. And because all of the files in my office were personal personnel files, you can't, you can't mix people with those files. So um, we put them in the room with the payroll director. They thought they worked for the payroll director. They worked for me. So what ended up happening was one of the girls that I hired wanted my job. So she told, yeah. So she ended up telling like lies about me to try and get me fired. But she told it to my boss, who was also my mentor and friend. And of course, she came to me. She said, this girl that you hired is talking about you and is trying to get you fired so she can have your job. So like little things like that. And I was just kind of shocked, like, really? Like she did? Like I hired her. Like, you know, so things like that, you never know what's happening. But because, you know, they knew I was a stand up type of person, you know, and it was something silly, like she saw me mailing, um, paperwork off and she told them that I was stealing postage from them like just silly stuff everybody <laughs> that knew anybody that heard it was just like yeah Kim doesn't do that kind of stuff and we actually go to her for postage because no one ever has stamps she's the only one that carries she's the only one that still goes to the post office and buys a book of stamps and carries around and I still I do <laughs> didn't even know what <laughs> I'm never without stamps so I just thought it was funny that that was what she chose to, you know, tell people. So I called her in my office one day and, you know, as the person that hired her, you know, and also as HR, I had to address it. And I'm just like, oh man, you know, I have to discipline this lady, you know, and oh, that was one of the things you. that, yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, you know, so it was it was so annoying because my boss wouldn't do it. I was like, "Well, you you can handle it because." And she was like, "Nope, this is your job. <laughs> like, I'm not doing it." And so, you know, I had to discipline her and just the lack of respect. And I still had to keep it all the way up here, even though she brought it down here and was just like, "Well, I'm better than you. I could do your job better than you. You shouldn't even have it. I'm gonna get you fired. This is gonna be my job." And I had to let her know. I said. 
you know what's so sad about it is I said, you came from this state and you're in this state. And what you don't understand is that HR laws are different in every state. I said, in order to take my job, you would have to be trained. And the only person that's here that can train you is me. I said, what you don't know is I just handed in my letter of resignation because I'm going back into the nanny field and you will never get this job ever because you needed a recommendation and you need training. I won't train you and I won't recommend you. They ended up firing her. Like, I think she lasted there maybe nine or 10 months after I left. They put her in a different department. She caused problems over there and they ended up firing her. Wow. Your personality takes you everywhere. Yes. Like if you, like, if you're like undercutting people and doing stuff, that stuff comes back to you. Yeah. Your personality, like meets you before everybody else. Like, you know, that's what brings and attracts people to you. So if you're nasty on the inside, it comes out in everything you do. So, I mean, that's just like, you know, one, one example I always use of different people in, in karma, because she, she literally, she was, she was trained as an executive assistant. She could have took my job if I would have trained her, but who would want to train someone like that? That's backstabbing you. Yeah. For no reason. It was like you had no reason <laughs> to do it. Other you had a I job. A job and I want it now. Right. I was like, but you, you, you know, you, you weren't even happy. And I had to explain to her. I'm like, I, the salary you have, I gave it to you. They don't pay any of the temps what you're making. I was like, the job that you have, I got the job for you. You work for me. She, and she didn't know that. She was just like, I work for you. You're doing my job. I could just as easily fire you and pick up my job again. But why would I want to? That's too much work. It was too much. <laughs> you know, but sometimes words, you, you got to know. I created a job for you, and now you want more. And you're acting ugly about it. it you, you can't stab people in the back and expect to mm -hmm. succeed. You can't. That's yeah. what you Promote the people who are around you even if they are in the same business, even if they're doing the same thing that you're yeah. doing, yes, you are in direct competition with, with, with someone else. But do you want to see somebody that's always stabbing somebody else? Do you want to work with somebody who's always stabbing somebody else in the back? Or yeah. would you like somebody who can mediate and get along with the, with their peers and with, you know, mm -hmm. we may be here. Yeah, I sold 10 cars yesterday. Yep. Oh. I sold 13. Okay, well, good for you. I will try my best to get up to that number. And you stay friends. And even though you're competing one mm -hmm. another with one another, you're competitive with one another, you are still human beings. You are yeah. still, at the end of the day, your job does not define you. And at the That's end true. of the day, you want, there's going to come a time when you're going to need that person. And you're going to need them to vouch for you. Mm -hmm. And if you have been busy stabbing them in the back and stabbing them in the back, guess what? You reap what you sow. Karma is real. It is. And just it's like true. Before, you got to sweep the floor before you own the building. She wasn't willing to sweep yeah. the floor. No, and not she at all. She want to own the building. Come <laughs> and own the building. <laughs> She want, she wanted to own the building, the and companies in it. it. She just wanted to give it to me. Give it to me. <laughs> yeah, it was it was totally the wrong way. And I think, you know, that was really I have to say that was probably my first encounter of that type of um hostile work environment that people talk about. Um I had never had that before. But I'm like for keeping it professional because that's what you have to do. When people come at you the wrong yeah. way, yeah. they come at you and you know they're coming with a six shooter and got one and them on the hip ready to, to refire when they finish this when they go fire. Yeah. You have to stay above board. You have to stay professional. I'm not saying don't protect yourself and don't defend mm -hmm. yourself, but there is a way that you can use your words. And I used to yep. tell, uh this guy I used to date, I see 
you come at me and you try to, you know, manipulate mm -hmm. do all these things to me. And all I got to do is open my mouth. I don't have to curse at you. I don't have to call you any names. Mm -hmm. I make you feel this small with the word. <laughs> I said, I am a wordsmith. Don't try me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but you can't. And I, don't, and I don't have to come down to your level in order to do it. Right. There are ways. It's, it's such a way that you can use your words that people will yeah. like, did she just curse me out? <laughs> but but let somebody else yep. come around and listen to that conversation and they're like oh but you know the words that you are using the person that you're talking to they understand mm -hmm. exactly what you're saying to the so somebody else's ears is like oh okay yeah he's you know teaching him something mm -hmm, yeah I'm schooling you all right but you know yeah it's, it's not true. It's true. Yeah, it's true. But you have. But to it's like you professional. have to. You, you have to be professional, and it's and the thing is, you know, I'm not, you know, not at those jobs anymore. But I'm constantly, I'm always approached with different things. I've worked my last job, or you know, working as a nanny. I would have, um, good example, because I did HR. The family just had a baby, and I remember they were like, well, you did HR. You know, the husband was like, she gets maternity leave, and I want to stay home for maternity leave. Well, what do I need to do? And what, do, you know, and I was able to be like, hey, well, this is what you need to do, and you need to let let them know, and you need to do, and he, he stayed home. He stayed home. He was home. I think he was home for like three or four months. I gave him some advice. Somebody else gave him some advice and he went to HR and he let them have it. Like, and they were like, okay. So he, he got to stay home with his wife for about four months with the baby on maternity leave. Wait. Hey. I, I'm all for it. And I, was, I yeah, love like you to get involved with their babies and, and spend time with their babies. And it, it just warms my heart because I've seen too many of them that come in and okay, the baby crying. All right, go get the go get the <laughs> Wait, I'm having a conversation as if I'm not. Go get the baby. Uh, uh, right. They're not going to stop crying until you go get them. Uh, uh, hello, I'm busy over here too. What's wrong with you? Are your legs not working or something? I love not working. when fathers become involved with the babies. And now, okay, will you finish doing what you're doing? I'll go get the baby. Are, are they have take turns? And, yeah. I'm an NCS. I've had fathers say, okay, well, when it was my turn to go get the babies, they did this. And then mom said, when it was my turn to go get the babies, I did, they did that. And I get an account from both parents, and I'm just sitting there just mm -hmm. smiling because inside of me, I'm like, yes! Yeah. I love the fact that, you know, dads are believed that they don't have this uh, nurturing instinct, but they do. Mm -hmm. They do. It's just a matter of bringing it out of them. And I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Now, Kim, it's almost nine o'clock. That's me. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> Sorry. You know, you I'm, know both of us can talk. <laughs> yes, we can. And we hope you all learned some valuable lessons from our talk. <laughs> but next week. Nanny Entrepreneur Online Fair. Yay. So, Yay. have a business and you want to promote your business, contact me, email, uh, personal message me, PM me. That's the quickest way to get to me is to PM me because sometimes um, I'm able to answer a PM before I can go on Facebook and scroll through and see who did what. If it's coming directly to me and I don't have to scroll through everybody else's message to get to yours, then sometimes I'm scrolling so fast I don't see yours. So PM me and ask to be put on the list. Now, I had planned on this being a short show, so next week could be about this long. But so <laughs> next week, I will see you. I will see you next week right here on Ask the Nanny. And we are doing an online fair of entre nanny entrepreneurs. Now, I don't know if this has ever been done before. And if it hasn't, yay! 
we're doing the first. If it has, yay, we're doing it again. So either way, <laughs> be right here for our nanny entrepreneur online fair. And please, whatever you do, support your nanny community. Support those who are in the same business as you are. And if you can use some of their products and they can use some of your products, swap out. Be co collaborate with one another, you know, trade with one another. Mm -hmm. I'll do it this time, you do it next time. Whatever you, if you're in the same city and you're doing the same thing, have a fair together, uh, put on a production together. You all sell your, sell your goods and services. Just saying. Yeah. There's strength in numbers. So, I will see you all next week. Be sure to uh, PM me and the first 12 people who PM me first, I will put your logo. If you have a logo for your business, I will put your logo in my advertisement. So it goes all over the internet. It goes all over into whatever groups that I share with, and you can share it in your groups. So I'm just saying, share this video with your friends because they will want to know what to do to mm -hmm. the first 12 people. Because with my advertising, I can only have 12, pe 12, 12 pictures. So first 12 people that contact me and have a logo, I will put it in my advertisement so that not only do the nanny see it, but all of my 3,000 and some of my friends will see it too. According to basically nice. algorithms, <laughs> about half of them see it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know right. why Facebook will not allow you to communicate with all of your friends all at the same time, but I'll try to communicate with as many as possible. So it is now 8.53 and we are signing off. And you all have a great week. And I'll see you all. Thanks later. for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for coming on and sharing your network experience and proving my points. <laughs> Anytime. There's a science behind my talk. And I just presented my science. This, this is my proof right here. This lady right there. <laughs> so I will see you all next week. Have a great week. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for sticking with us to the end. And we will see you next week.